did we confirm above the level? And the answer is no, you didn't confirm. You closed above. Closing above is not confirming. I could be wrong. Now, generally, I'm not, but I could be. If you've taken the winning trader series, if you've taken the methodology that I teach, is you had a time count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Add more, bat down at 17,000. Moves generally stall out after a seven move in a direction. So right away, you have that on your, on your factors. You can make so much more money by playing these highs and lows and highs and lows over and over again, just like when I was short up here and we covered right down here on the last trade. It's always a method to the madness, and it doesn't guarantee success by any stretch, but it ultimately puts me in a position where I'm looking for a quick swing trade. In this video, Gareth Soloway, the chief market strategist and co-founder of InMiniYStocks.com, a proficient technical analyst and trader, will provide insights into our successful short position on Bitcoin at $50,000, utilizing various technical indicators. He'll also discuss his long-term outlook for buying Bitcoin. Additionally, he'll analyze Ethereum's recent challenge in surpassing the critical resistance level of $2,500 and the necessary steps for it to break above and achieve new highs. Furthermore, Gareth will address the imminent short-term breakdown potential in gold, along with the corresponding support and target levels. Join us in this interview as Gareth delves into these topics and more. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. All right, guys, we are back here. First of all, of course, we're going to start with Bitcoin. I know Bitcoin is a, is a favorite out there. Again, beautiful move up here. Now, I want to show you guys why I shorted, right? It's not... It, this is the thing is like, again, people who don't understand technical analysis, they don't understand the thought process behind it. And number one is I could be wrong. Now, generally, I'm not, but I could be. And again, the first thing to note here as a technician, if you've taken the winning trader series, if you've taken the methodology that I teach, is you had a time count. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Moves generally stall out after a seven move in a direction. So right away, you have that on your on your factors. Number two. We had a double top at this pivot point, which we pierced, but ask yourself this, did we confirm, did we confirm above the level? And the answer is no, you didn't confirm. You closed above, closing above is not confirming. Another factor is if we look at a longer term chart, let's go to the daily chart, let's zoom all the way back to 2019, we take that same high pivot that I've used before, connecting it through the lows of the bull market here. And we drag that up and it connects perfectly through the $49,000 high and right to this current high. And again, I can zoom in on that and you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So there you go. If we zoom in, we, we tagged an even number and even numbers, another important thing for Bitcoin, as well as obviously this upsloping trend line. So again, there's always a method to the madness and it doesn't guarantee success by any stretch but it ultimately puts me in a position where I'm looking for a quick swing trade, right? So for me, as a trend, what am I looking for? Well, to be honest, if we just pull back, let's say we take this low here, all right, we go down to, let's go down right to here, right? And we take that low and we extend it right out, right here, right? So very simply put, as a swing trader, that's all I care about. I, I couldn't frankly care where Bitcoin goes in the next six months, the next year, the next five years. In fact, I have a tiny HODL position, which I had more, bat down at 17,000. But again, that's the long term. For me as a swing trader, I can make so much more money by playing these highs and lows and highs and lows over and over again, just like when I was short up here and we covered right down here on the last trade. Well, now I'm short up here. And if we come down here, exit again, simple as that. Now, would I be, be a buyer as a swing trade there? I'd have to see. I have to reevaluate the trend line. Yes, the trend line is pretty solid. There might be an opportunity to swing trade long there, but my longer-term epic level remains at around the thirty to 32,000 range, right? So again, I feel like a lot of people have talked about this now after I've talked about it, so it's, it's possible that it's not as good. But if we just draw a trend line right here, we can very clearly see that you take the bull market lows here from 2021 right here, right through here, all right? And it kind of just connects right through these highs. So if we ever got a pullback there, that would be kind of the no-brainer buying opportunity on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's price skyrocketed above the $50,000 threshold, marking a significant milestone not seen since December 2021. This surge was fueled by substantial ETF inflows and encouraging U.S. inflation data. However, hopes were dashed as Bitcoin's price plummeted by $1.6,000 on high CPI figures, leading the market to price out the possibility of a Fed rate cut. Consequently, Bitcoin retreated back to $18,000.
ETH is continuing to power up here. If we look at Ethereum, again, we had our very, our very direct lines here. Um, we had the inner channel, which was parallel to the bigger channel. We've now pushed above this high, which generally means we should have the option to test this high right up there, which is right around 27.75. Will it break that in the near term? I don't know. All I know is that's resistance, just as simple as that. Ethereum has recently surpassed the $2,500 mark and shows no signs of slowing down. With a market value exceeding $300 billion, it maintains its strong position as the second largest cryptocurrency. Berkman's optimistic forecast for Ethereum's value against the dollar seems to be materializing, as the crypto started the week with a significant uptick. Gold is breaking down. Again, short-term breakdown, though, and I want to be clear on this. This is a short-term breakdown. It really does nothing to the bigger picture in terms of the inverse head and shoulders. But again, if you're just looking at the short-term, we have a very clear trend line right here, right? Right there, and then we're breaking right here. All right, so where would this go? Well, first support would be right here, right? You're looking at 1975, and then you're looking at a couple other levels right in there. So again, short-term breakdown. I don't think this really changes the narrative for gold that inflation is starting to climb. In fact, it could even add fuel to the fire that once you see a run from safety that lasts more than just a one-day event like today, the, the end goal is people are underinvested in gold, underinvested in gold miners, and that could be an, that, an asset to go to in that scenario. All right, but again, it is trading down today. The Consumer Price Index report released on the morning of February 13th revealed higher inflation figures than previously anticipated, reaching 3.1% compared to the expected 2.9%. One of the initial assets to respond to this news was gold. Within minutes of the report's publication, the commodity experienced a significant decline, dropping as much as 1.42%. Consequently, the price of gold fell below $2,000 for the first time since December 13th, 2024. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.